I'm just getting everything ready to go live. Here we are. Got to set up for my next waiting for Instagram to go live. But while we're waiting for everybody to go live, here we go. Now we can go live there. Hello. Hey, everybody. And a welcome to my card making Wednesday. It's been a little while since we have done a live card making Wednesday, but we are back and welcome. Nice to see you here. to be back. It's been a little while. I know I've, I've not, not been on my channel. I just haven't done a live Wednesday card making video with you guys in a long, long time. So it's kind of fun to be back again. <laughs> it's been a long summer. I've had the retreat. I've had all kinds of stuff, but today's video is all about autumn. So thanks or something. Thanks, Kimmy. <laughs> Already jumping ahead of myself. Halloween is officially over, so now we are jumping into autumn and Thanksgiving and all things fall before we do the mad rush into Christmas. So before we get too fall into this season, too further into the season, too fall, I, I keep saying the same thing, let's do some cards. So let's take a look. We've got three amazing cards that we're going to be playing with today. So here we have uh, all variations and super simple things that you probably already have in your home. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Ashley. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. So these are the three cards we're going to make today. Let's jump in with one of my All right, so we're going to do ink blending. I've already done a little bit of some stuff ahead of time. Some things that you probably need to have on hand in order to do these is colors of inks that are in the autumn vibe. So yellows, oranges, reds, browns, kind of at greens, hitting those autumn colors. We're all dealing with leaves today. So anything that kind of hits those, those color markers right there. And then whatever kind of either you can use uh, punches. So if you've got a punch, you can use that. Or if you've got die cuts, we're going to be using die cuts today. Or if you want to pop this into your Cricut and then cut it to your Cricut or your silhouette or your brother's cut, something like that. So that's the vibe we're working with today. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to play with this. I have already die cut out a couple of things. So right here I have my border. I have a little pitched border that I did on the edge and rectangle and smaller than your A2 so this is a four and a quarter by five and a half size card and then this one measures to be 3.75 by five so it's a half an inch down on either side hey Deborah hello hello hi Allison and then I took three dies which tell you really fast I have these three little dies right here of which I went through and I die cut all three of these and so I just laid them down, I, I maneuvered them in there, and then I ran them through, so now I have an opening. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our background. And I have found the best little trick recently to do any kind of, we're going to do some ink blending for the background, my gel plate. I have had this stinking gel plate for so long, and I think when they do this in a video, and they're using it as their sticky mat to put down their elements whenever they're doing their... Um, Backgrounds. I'm like, that is so smart. So I just have a little bit. These are all the leftover die cuts. I'm debating do I want to like make them colors? Do I want to use this for something else? And you totally could because these are all the elements that came out of here. I just popped them in here for now. So the colors I'm going to be dealing with, and I'm pretty much going to mimic what we did here, is I've got green, yellow, orange, and red. So most of my colors are Casper cooler colors. I love them. And then I do have a red. I'm going to do green, yellow, orange, red. They are. And I do mix and match. I love Catherine Fuller. They're great for ink blending, but I also love the Wendy Vichy. And I just don't have a red. So I use what I have. I don't feel like I need to be too concerned with being in one color family only or one brand. Whatever I have on hand is what I'm going to be using. All right. So we're going to start with the green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down. So I cut this to be smidgen shorter on either side so it's not quite the full length it's just a tiny bit narrower and I didn't worry about going the full length because we only have to back what's behind here so I'm going to start with this and the nice thing about doing this on the gel thing is that number is my mat from below me getting all dirty and gross number two if it ends up getting color on here this can take all kinds of paint it can take ink blending it can take just about anything and all I have to do is take this over to my sink and wash this. So it's really easy. All right, I'm going to do some green here. Really get in. Now I'm going to look real fast. Where am I at? Because I want to have, yeah, so I want to do a little bit of an overlap color. So I'm good on the green. 
I'm going to come in with the yellow. And I just have my little off the side here. I have my little. <laughs> Don't put everything on camera. It's so a little bit of yellow coming in here. Got a little more, a little extra on there. So did everybody survive the crazy Halloween? You need to take my gel plate out. It's this is a. I mean, it's not using it as a gel plate, but it's using it as a tool, which. I love when I already have something that's in existence and I a different way. I'm like, oh, I already have that. I want to go buy something new. I have something. Comes some orange, a little overlap here, a little extra orange. We're going to go a little deeper. And let's, then we're going to go in with our red. Let's see where we're at. So see, this is super simple so far. You could do this for Christmas and we're going to do a hint of red. I did a lot of red on this one. We're just going to do a little hint of red on this one. But you could do this for Christmas. You could do ornaments. You could, I mean, just think of all the different colors that you could do in this particular, like not colors, there are different shapes you can cut out. This is not unique. And I didn't invent this card. It's just one that's like, this is easy. I have all the stuff. I can do this. This card's not that hard. There it is. You can see all the fun colors. We've got our different autumn colors, and you could totally change this up. You can have all kinds of fun with this. Oh, thanks, Debbie. <laughs> She's saying, don't forget to hit that like. All right, now what I'm going to do, move anything that I don't want to get wet out of the way. This is the other thing why I use my gel plate because I have used, oh, what brand is the red ink? The red ink that I'm using is a Wendy Vichy. This is a blendable dye ink. Um, it's because I didn't have a red for Catherine Pooler, but again, I love it just as much. It works all the same. So it does a really good job. Good question. Feel free to ask questions. So I was using, um, there's a whole bunch of these. There's little sticky mats. This one I got at the Dollar Tree. And your paper can stick to this just like it does to the gel mat. But what I found over time is this doesn't get very sticky. Basically, this is like one of those mats that you put in your uh your cricket but they made it for damping but it's hard to wash it doesn't keep it stick this thing has it stick it can get washed multiple times it can get wet it's not a problem and i feel like this has just become my new best friend because <laughs> i do lots of ink blending i love ink blending all right so i have water and all i'm going to do is i'm going to take my water and i'm going to go spritz 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 and it's a few little spritzies because all of this is water activated. So all of these inks are very similar. The difference between the Catherine Pooler and the Wendy Vitch, you can already see it doing this thing, right? Is that this, it has a different pad. I mean, the ink is a tiny bit different, but this has got a foam pad so I can really get in with my blending brushes. This one's got a felt pad. So the pad is a little bit different, but the reactivity with the water for these inks are the same, just like with the iron oxides and with the distress. So if you have your distressed inks and you've got a bunch of different colors, this technique works the same thing. This is not a new technique. It's just something fun to do. I always like to go in with a little bit of a paper towel. And if you notice, I didn't do crazy, crazy, crazy spraying. And I'm just going to pick up the excess water. And there's just a tiny bit of water, but not much. So now we've got this kind of really cool distress. I'm just going to wipe off my plate. Next, we're going to put this off to the side. Let that dry for a hot minute. We're gonna come in with our front cover. And I have a little bit of some chocolate stencil butter. This could also work with paint. You can work this with paint, with stencil butter, it does not matter. I'm gonna take just a little bit out of the cap. I don't need much, put it on my paper towel. I could put it on the side here, but I don't wanna get it smushed. If I had a big gel plate, I could use my gel plate as also my, um, like my, my palette because it doesn't, but I can throw this away. So if I had like a 12 by 12 gel plate and I was doing ink blending over here, I could have different colors off the side for the different colors that I was using for painting if I want to do splatter effects and stuff. It's up to you how you want to do it. All right, I have a little bit of paint on here and I'm going to spray this. So it gets nice and sprayed. And I'm just going to kind of dab it so it's not drippy. And then we're going to do the flicky method. You guys remember this? Sometimes people used to do this with toothbrushes. There we go. It's just adding a little bit of color to the front. And you can do as little as much as you like. I think that's good. Maybe a little more centered. I feel like I need some more water on here because it's. You guys remember doing this with toothbrushes and you dab it in the water or in the paint and then you flick. 
I'm like, I want to go back. I, I was just thinking, I want to go back to all these techniques that I haven't touched in a while, you know, doing the, just having fun. Yeah, a little messy, a little fun, a little having fun. And if you've got big splotches and little splotches, totally fine. Now, I would take this. This is the reason why I did the paper towel here and really rub this great. I'm in. And I'm going to take this to my sink and really get this. But I just want to try to get most of the ink, the paint off of here. We are going to be using this brush again for one of the other layers. So I don't need to get it super, super clean. And then before I get too involved, start putting my card bases down. This is why I love this. Lift it up a little clean on my table because I just got paint. I just got the stencil butter everywhere. But again, if you don't have stencil butter, use what you have. If you have brown paint, you could totally do that technique with brown paint. And then I'm just going to let this rest over off the side without touching anything. Make sure my hands are clean. This is the other big one is I will forget to make my hands clean. So let off the side. See how easy that is to move around to. It's nice and small. This is the six by six gel plates. And it has become my new best friend, like I said. <laughs> All right, I'm just making sure because I'm going to be touching white card bases and I was dealing with inks and paints and stuff. I don't want to get my stuff all mucky. Normally I'd go to the sink, but you know, we're live <laughs> and I don't have a sink right near me. So we're going to do it this way. All right. I feel like we've got clean enough. So we're going to pull this off and take that same paper towel. And this is the cleanup that's so simple. I'm done with this now. A little bit of water, wipe this down. And if it doesn't get super clean, I'm not worried about it because if I ever want to do a mono print and there's some fun stuff left over, it's great. We'll have some of the fun things. And then you always want to store them. They come in these little clamshells. And so just make sure you store them back in the clamshells. You want to store them horizontally, not vertically. Otherwise, they start kind of shifting. And that's how you store it. Easy peasy. Simple, simple, right? All right, so let's start building our card base. Oh, I forgot to cut out a, well, I forgot to cut a card backing to the card. So we're gonna do that while everything's drying. Excuse me. <coughs> I didn't mean I had a mint in my mouth and this was <coughs> the joys of life. I'm sorry, that is probably right in the mic. Horrible, horrible, horrible. All right, <clears throat> that's better. As I'm like tearing up. <laughs> oh boy. So my kids had a blast last night. I'm just cutting a card base that's five and a half. This is an eight and a half by eleven two card stock. I'm just cutting it at the five and a half mark. So now I have two cards. This is partly why I love this card size, is because I can get a lot of cards and not have a bunch of wasted paper. <coughs> I am so sorry. Oh, there's a little tickle in my throat, and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> I get for not going live like this very often, right? No, just kidding. Okay, let's put our card base down first. <clears throat> Anybody else's kids go trick or treating? We normally hope you get. It's just because I have a tickle in my throat, so, and I'm not sick. I've been feeling just fine. Just like one of those little tickles that gets in the back of your throat, and then it just want to makes you cough because you have the tickle in your throat. That's all that is. I am feeling just fine, <laughs> but sorry about the coughing into the camera and to the, into the mic, that's no fun. So all I'm gonna do is make a paper towel and I'm just gonna do a quick test. I mean, oh yeah, see, look, it's totally dry. I, I went and did a few other things before I got to this point, so we're good. Now we're gonna go ahead and flip this over. I have a little bit of a piece of here and here. This is why I wanna make sure my table was completely clean before I did all this stuff. And then line this up. And I definitely went higher and lower, way, way exaggerated on either side. So that way I didn't have a problem. And there it is. One more. <coughs> now the one difference, sorry about that again, is if you notice on this one, I went from green to red. This one I went from red to green. It does not matter. It does not matter at all. So before we go and stick this under here, we do need to put our stamp on there. So I'm going to get out my Misty. And because we're dealing with lots of browns, and very earthy tones. I don't tend to gravitate to black when I do my stamping here. I tend to stick to browns. So that's why I have my, my only really good brown that I have. So initially, and I just pulled from my stash. That's what these cards are. Pull from your stash, use what you have. Hang on, I'm supposed to, there we go. Use what you have, 
use your stash. You don't have to go buy new supplies. If you're interested in, I mean, I have links down below, but it's use what you already have. I didn't purchase any new things. I went and found old stuff that I have. I'm like, ooh, do I have a stamp set that says Thanksgiving or give thanks or something along those lines that would work for this card? And I actually found a happy Thanksgiving stamp that I've had for a couple of years. Um, on here is also, that's what I did for the return one, but on here is also um, Eat, Pray, Be Thankful. thought we would do that one for this card, but they're a little different. So I'm gonna put the happy Thanksgiving back. Yeah. And let's do the eat, pray, be thankful. And then this is where you can have fun with where you want to place this. So use what you have. Don't go break the bank to build new cards. I bet some of you, if you already have some card making supplies, you have something in your stash already. That would be a grateful, thankful. You can even say thank you. That would totally work if it's Thanksgiving. Um, Autumn blessings or the blessings. I bet you have a stamp in one of your dice in one of your stamp sets that is already there, or you can handwrite it. You don't have to go and make something new. This one says "Eat, Pray, Be Thankful," and I chose to do it at the bottom on this card, which I like that because it gives some height to this. But you could also, just to show you options, you could put it just below. Um, you could put it just above. You have some places where you can go. Let's do it just below for fun. Now I should have, I should have stamped it first for the just below, but it's okay if we did the other way around. Let's go right there. Just so that I didn't, I'm not stamping over top of my paint splatters, but it's totally fine. And you either can go to the left or you can go, let's go to the right, to the left, instead of to the right, just as something different. So you can change where that stamp is being placed, whatever fits your groove. If you like it above, go above, if you like it below. Notice when I did die cut though these three elements, I did have them towards the top, which gave me room to work below. If you like the idea of the stamp at the top, maybe drop the three die cut elements down a little lower. So it's just it's playing with it, playing with how it's all put together. See what you like. What you like might be totally different than what I like. So I'm going to stamp this twice so I get nice, good impression. I never get a good impression the first time around. I'm looking for my little my little tool, my hockey puck. It's not a hockey puck, it's the air hockey puck. That's what, like. <laughs> That's what they look like. Eat, pray, be thankful. See, it needs another pass. It's not quite dark enough all over. So going back to things or Halloween. I feel like Halloween was over. I had to do a Thanksgiving class. <laughs> I had to do a Thanksgiving. Class. There it is. Nice and dark now. We normally get you know, 50 to 60 to 70 kids. We got maybe 20. I was shocked. How few kids? I'm just putting my stamp back because if I don't put my stamp back, I'm going to forget it. And I still have a little tiny stamp that's been sitting over here that I don't know what stamp that it came from. I've still yet to figure that out because I left it in my Misty going, oh, I'll put it away when I'm done with my live video. A year and a half has gone by. I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> Go figure. But yeah, we only got like 20 kids. I don't know if because it was a Tuesday or because we were colder, because we were normally, normally you're sweating in your costume. I live in Austin, Texas, and we normally are just baking. But this year it was chilly, and I don't know if that scared people away because it was too cold. Made everything look nice. Look, oh, there it is. Super simple card. Just a little bit of ink blending. If ink blending is not your thing, you could totally also just take your um, stamp pad and swipe with a card level underneath if ink blending isn't your thing. You can just swipe colors. You can also do paint underneath. You can have all kinds of fun. I like the splatter underneath. I like the splatters on top. It just adds something, but it's also a very clean card because there's not much going on. And I love when I have a little bit of craft paper, especially for autumn or fall cards. It just kind of adds. Now this one, I did some gems on here. So if you guys can really see, there's some gems going on. This one I left plain. And I also played around with where the sun came is. You can have fun, really play around, use what you have. I bet you have some colored paint or some paint or something. You could even do colored paper back behind there if you don't have ink blending or anything like that. So many options for these kinds of things. All right, so that's our first one we're doing today. Let me put it off to the side. The second one we are gonna build, find an example. One is a little cluster card. I love making little clusters, and these are all from elements that I die cut, but you could also punch. I was going through my stash of different punches that I have, and you could easily 
you know, if you've got any kind of, I've got tons of flowers, but you could, I think I even have, I was pretty sure that I, oh yeah, I bet you have some of these, like just different kinds of punches in your stash, but you probably also have some leaves, may not be the main focus of the stamp set, but I bet you have some leaves in your stamp set, that they're somewhere. So that's all I did, cleaning up a little bit, but I wrap everywhere. As I went through, and I die cut out like a red, an orange, a yellow. I had these little leafy things. Here's the same one again, just in two different colors. And then another little leafy one. So I mix and matched a few different sets. These ones, I've, I've had these ones for so long, which is the ones I used to die cut these. I don't remember where I even got them, but I'm, I bet you got something in your stash or you've got something along those lines or you've got some die cut elements in there. So we went ahead and die cut all those. First thing we're going to do is we are going to mark where our stamp is. And I do like to thank you. I do like the word thank you on there. So now I can use this for autumn or I can use it as a thank you card. And where do I line it up? So when I die cut this out, this I have embossed. Can you guys see that weaving embossing? This weaving embossing is a Tim Holtz one that came out a couple years ago. And it looks like, like weaving, like a basket weave. And I just did it on white because it does look you know, very earthy and kind of and it's at 3D, so you could go over and add a layer on top. We're going to play with this for the next part as well. But it looks like a woven basket. So I thought that really fit for Thanksgiving. If you've got, oh, shoot, anything that's kind of a woven, you could do dots. You can have fun. Or you could leave it just plain white. You don't even have to do the embossing part on this. It just adds another little extra layer of texture. If that's where you want to go with your card, you do you. Have fun with it. So to get the right level... I, this is measured for the exact same width, which is all the way to four and a quarter. And then I cut off an inch and a half. Here I did an inch and a quarter. And this one I did an inch and a half. So there's the difference in height. Which one do you like better? Do you like seeing more of the craft and less, less weight? Have fun. Play with them. I'm going to show you options that you don't have to do everything exactly the same dimensions. If you change up your dimensions, it totally works as well. So to make sure I have my stamp in the right location, I've got to find my fancy tool, a pencil. <laughs> and I'm just going to line it up. And right along here, I'm just going to go just under. I'm using my, my paper as a guide, and I'm just going to draw myself a little line. And now I have a guide to, to go just above that with the word thank you that we're going to stamp on. If you've got the word blessings, if you've got the pick a word that fits for you that you like. Something that is long, something that is bigger. You could do a tiny word. You could have a nice big word too. There's lots of space in this, on this uh, card for a lot of different options. So stamp first, and that's how you know where to stamp is by using for the guide. I did cut this down to size first before. So I mean, I, I did a full sheet and I just cut off the top. And, and I, so I embossed the full sheet of paper, cut off the top, and then that's how I got my guide right there. So we are going to do, I did like the thank you. I'm going to go back to the thank you. It actually came from a, it looked like an autumn kind of stamp set. I didn't go for the ones that were more squarish. I went for ones that were longer. So I went for what it looked like in terms of the shape of the stamp set. Because when I did this, it just didn't quite have the same vibe. It just looked too bulky. So I went longer. But again, play with it. Have fun. Whatever you want to do putting the stamp back so I don't lose it. And then line this up. So we're gonna put this here. And I want my cluster to go on the left side. So my stamp is gonna go on the right side. Make sure this is nice and level. Okay. So I'm just looking at the guide here. I probably didn't draw my line straight. So I'm not gonna use my line in the guide. I'm gonna use my eyeballs of my stamps. So I'm using this line right here to line the top of that stamp set up. So it's lined up just, just as close to the eyeball of straight that I possibly can get. And then stamp it up. Probably do. <laughs> and oh my God, I got to clean this. Oh, it's so gross. It's so filthy. I am the worst. I will put stamps away so I don't lose them. But the cleaning part, I get done with my, needs another one. It's just not dark enough. Um, I will be so bad about cleaning off my Misty. It's the one thing that I just get mucky and I'm like oh, I'll clean it later and I never do and then I get 
you know, like I have another video to do. I'm like, eh, it's fine, no big deal. <laughs> so a little bit darker. I like that, it looks a lot better. Putting the stamp set away that I don't forget. These are all the stamps I've been using have been from Pretty Pair. And I did put the link down below. I didn't put to specific product. I just put it to the company, but you got something. I bet you got something in your stash that would work. I'd be shocked if you didn't have a cute thank you already from a stamp set. And it doesn't even have to be one that came from Thanksgiving or anything that's autumn related. It could be something completely unrelated and it totally works. All right, so now we're gonna build the twine that goes around the edge. I'm gonna come a little, I'm, I messed around with it too much, so it's kind of pulling, I need to rethink it. So I went again in my stash and I found one that had a little bit of some brown in it. And if you notice the theme for these, yes, it's autumn or fall cards, but it's also just very clean, white, very, very subtle card, not in like super in your face. So my trick for this one is, and I want to do three wraps, three tends to look really good, is getting yourself some tape. And we're going to tape as close to the top as possible, because we're going to run this right along the top edge. You're trying to run right along that edge right here, right? And then we are going to wrap around the edge here. One, and don't go too tight. If you're getting to the point where your paper is starting to buckle up like this, that means you're going too tight. So loosen yourself up. I did that on purpose. Okay, so nice and loose. Don't pull. There we go. Now those are two linear. So I'm gonna actually drop first one. I'm gonna go angle, make an X and then go in the center. And that way you get that wrapped look. And I'm gonna stretch it the other way to make sure it's not too tight. I went too tight. This is why I like taping it, because then I don't have to worry about it. So X, keep it loose. X, keep it loose. And then we're in the center. There, now it's nice and loose. And then we come in with our tape again before I do any cutting. Everything's nice on there. And I will go ahead and tape all three this time. So I only did the first one that time, but now they're all stuck on there and they're good and tight. So that's how I have always done. I'm going to find scissors that don't seem to want to exist on my desk. They're buried under something, I can guarantee it. Where have you gone? Whatever, I'll get new ones. I have a drawer of scissors because I keep using them. Or my children take them. I have little thieves in my house. They could steal my scissors. <laughs> All right, so now we have our three. And there it is on the front. And you can rearrange these and kind of shift them down. See, I, now I can kind of play with where, and I like that they're kind of coming to a center right here, which is where my cluster is. So let's go ahead and glue this part down and see how that lines up right on top because I had my pencil mark. It's just right perfectly where it needs to be. So we're gonna go ahead and add, you wanna pop dot this up, you could. I didn't want to. And then I'm gonna get right on top here. So I had a little bit of adhesive right on the tape and stuff. And then we're going right to the bottom corner. So this is not matted. You're not going to see the border. You're just seeing the craft at the top. Everything else looks like it's just sitting right on top there. So there's our card. And I didn't do a very good job scoring this. But it should look like it's just white on the bottom and crap on top. Now we're going to come in with our layers here. Get this stuff out of the way. The next piece that we're going to do is we're going to do our bow. So we're going to do our nice big bow. And I have just a little bit of twine and then some more of that. And I bet you guys have some. I keep saying that. I bet you have some of this stuff in your stash. Because I mean, I probably do as a card maker. I bet you have twine and I bet you have some. And even if your baker's twine is not brown and white, I bet you have an, a red and white or an orange and white or a green and white or a brown and white. Or it could be a darker color. You know, there's just there's so many baker's twine. You, you probably have it wrapped on a stamp set that you bought and it came as, did you guys keep those? You keep those little freebies, like the crinkle paper, or if it's wrapped in twine, or if the tissue paper. I'm a hoarder. I keep all that crap. It's so bad. <laughs> but I use it. So therefore, I keep it. I use it. <laughs> oh, I got somebody from the UK and from New Brunswick, Canada. Hello, hello. All right, so now we've got our bow. This is how I do my bow. Let me get the stuff out of the way so you can really see. So I line up the two pieces. You could do it with three. Three is kind of my max. I feel like if I get more than three strands, it's really big. I do a bunny ear, bunny ear, and then just tie the beginning of a square knot. Okay, I don't like that the bunny ears are coming apart. I want them to stay together. I just they kind of flipped apart. Bunny ear. 
and then make yourself a little hole and then pull the two together through. It's just, it's a knot that you would do to shut tie your shoelace, but it's the bunny ear method. And the reason why I like that is because when I start tightening it, the ears stay on top and the tail stay on the bottom. So it makes the bow look more like a bow. And then you have to decide how big do I want my bow. And this is where I'm looking here and we're gonna have this come right up to the top, right, right there. But first we're gonna layer all of our elements below. We're gonna have one kind of tuck in there. We're just making that cute little cluster right there. All right, so that's gonna go there. These ones I cut loose. I think I'm liking the longer tail on this. So I think I'm gonna leave the tails as long, but you can always trim them later. Cut longer than you think, and then trim to the size that you like. But first, let's do these. Now, I know I wanna put my big bright orange at the bottom. And one thing I'm gonna do for all of these is I'm gonna crinkle them up a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of some crinkling just to give them some texture. So I'm just coming into each one of the leaves and kind of just squishing them, giving them a little bit of texture, making them not look so flat. I only did this to the top couple over here, but I'm actually gonna do it to all of them on this one. The only one that I'm not gonna do is that big one right there. Cause this one's gonna sit on the bottom. And then we're gonna grab some wet glue. So one of my papers, this is how old this is. You guys remember the bow bunny dot paper? I think I still have, it's sitting right over here. Maybe you have some of this left over. I have ported it. The one side it's got dots and then the other side it looks like swirls. I love using this for textured for texture like stuff like this. Instead of just plain cardstock, it already has a little bit of texture to it. So we're gonna use the dot side just for fun. I did it on this one too, but you really can't see the dots very well. A little bit of glue on the back. I love the Barely Art glue because it's got pretty good stick. There's a few of these out there. So there's Barely Art. Scrapbook.com has got one. I'm just going to tuck it underneath here. I'm going to start building. So one's going to go there. There's another one that Scrapbook.com has. It's called the Artist Glue. I feel like it's about the same thing. And then um, Sizzix has another version that's this, their, their own Sizzix glue. I feel like they're all pretty interchangeable. This one does have the pin that goes in there. Same with the artist glue from scrapbook.com. I feel like they're all kind of in the same realm of right here. They have a good hold. They all do a great job. I'm only putting the glue in the center because I want the leaves to kind of have some life to themselves. So now I'm going to go one to the side. I'm going to come in with one of the green ones now. Just go down the center. You might even have some like flower packs that have a little greenery in there. That you don't have to die cut that could be a possibility these ones i already kind of gave some life to them so i don't have to do a whole lot let's go right here do brown see i'm just kind of going in the center here i don't want the leaves i want the leaves to still kind of poke up a little bit just layering it now when you're doing layers Think of it like this. So I had one, two, three, four, five. That's five. This would make six. And then my bow makes seven. So odd numbers are best. This one also has seven. If I did six, this is funny, let me tell you. I put the bow on there. And it feels like there's just, it's not quite even enough. There's probably enough layers that you wouldn't notice it at first. But to me, it's missing a layer. I do like that pop of the lighter color on top, which is why I did it there as well. I'm gonna put the bow down first and I'm gonna place my last lip. So a little bit of glue right in here, just the part that kind of comes in. And this is gonna go right up there. So it's right in this little part of the bow is coming up on top and some of it hanging down below. So our cluster is just right at that border. And then now I'm gonna come in and put our last leaf. And this one's gonna kind of tuck and I want some of it to kind of go above. So they're all kind of nestled together. That's what I did with that one too. And now it's got a little bit of dimension because we crinkled all those little leaves. And then there we go. That's easy, right? And then if you want to leave, if you want to have your strands be like stuck stiff, you can always come in with a little dot of glue. And like if you want to have your you can like dot, dot, and then they stay, or you can have them dangle. It's kind of up to you if you want to have them be free flowing tails. You want to cut them shorter so they're not so long, or if you want to glue them down in place. That's a personal preference, depending on what you want to do. I like them being able to free flow, it just gives it more of a 
a looseness and kind of a, a chill to the card. And if you want to come in and add some gems or you want to have, you want to put like a flower in there, there's like, there's lots of options. I just kept with leaves for the clusters for these ones, just keeping it simple. You could also change out the stamp set. So thank you, celebrate, um, thanks, uh, be grateful, um, anything along those lines. I think those would all be fantastic for on top of there. They would be really, really cute there. That's the next card. Look how easy that is. So that was the second card. This is the first card that we did. Now we're going to jump into our last card. All right. So let's put these off to the side. Our last card. Where'd it go? Here it is. This one's fun. We're going to do some more ink splitting in here in a minute. So here we have the same background. This is the same um, 3D embossing folder from Sizzix. This one's a Tim Holtz. I forget what it's called, though. Woven basket or something. I don't know. I have the package. It, it's, it's buried in my packaging, but it looks like a woven basket. It's really quite cute. If you guys know what this one's called? Let me know. I don't remember, but it looks like a woven basket. It's got a name. It came out a couple of years ago. So this is not new, but I love it for this one or just in general for autumn. So for this card, I actually took, and if you can probably see when you compare it, and we're going to do it both ways so that we can see the difference. On the front cover on the woven part, I took a little bit of the Dune stencil butter from Crafters Workshop and I just took a brush and went over the entire thing. So it does have a little bit of sheen and a shine. You can totally do that. It's just like painting over top of it, but it's still letting you see. This one we're gonna leave white just to show you the difference between the two. But all I did is I literally took a stencil brush. I'll do a little bit on the bottom here. A little bit of, and then I just went like this. That's all I did, not in the nooks and crannies. And this is Dune, which is just a nice soft. It reminded me of a woven basket, but you can totally do, just leave it plain, or you could just do a white sheet of paper. You don't even have to go to this level and adding the colors, but plain if you want. So we're gonna leave this one plain just for grains and fills, just so you can see the difference. The rest of the card is all the same. So I cut out uh, four squares of white, and each of these little squares, is one and a quarter inches, so one and, or 1.25. And we're gonna lose them in place. So since this is 1.25, if I added both of these together, that would be two and a half. I went a quarter of an inch bigger for the big craft square, so I went two and three fourths, or 2.75. So I'm gonna take each one of these little squares now, and I'm gonna go in the corner. I'm gonna lightly place them on and to make sure. This is how I kind of guide, and I go, okay, here's the next one. And if it looks good to my eyeball, if everything looks fairly even, and that's how I know I did a good job. I am not one to go in and be super meticulous about my placing as long as it looks good to me. Like, I don't want to go in there and do that. So I am going to come in and look and go, okay, is that about the same even spacing all the way around? You would do wet glue if you wanted to for this. I feel like that's pretty darn good. These are all white, so it doesn't matter what order you put them in. That looks good. And then our little last one right here. And that looks good. Ta -da. <laughs> now we're going to come in and do our stamping before we get too many layers on our paper. And I found a really cute tiny stamp that says give thanks. And I'm going to use the same one because I like the shape of it. It fit the space. I don't know if I can see. Um, oh, no, actually I found a better one. So this one I have give thanks. I did find that one. But there's also one in here, many thanks. I think that would fit in there and work just the same. So it's the size. I wanted more of a squarish shape, one that was nice and small. So when I put my leaf on there, it doesn't get in the way. And so the leaf I chose was this one. So when I die cut it out, and so I kind of play around with it. And it's okay if it doesn't stay fully on the square. But if I lay it like this, it's not going to get in the way of the stamp. So that's kind of how I looked at it. So that's going to go as far into the corner as possible. I liked it in the left corner, and then that's where that's going to go. And again, I'm going to do that in the brown, because I feel like there's black is just too dark. It's too much of a contrast of color. There's all these beautiful brown colors. You could go in with a red, you could go in with an orange, but I felt the brown was just the right color for this. Usually I default to black, but I felt like with autumn colors, and since we're really kind of hitting those autumn vibes, the brown just worked. It's a really dark brown that just worked a little bit better. Again, stamp away. 
not forget it. <laughs> so again, I bet you have something. Thanks. You know, this this one also would work. Thinking of you would work. Many thanks. Grateful for you. That would probably work. Nice and small, little square one in the corner. The other one I did was give thanks. It works too. I bet you have something. So that is done. Little corner. Now we're going to build our leaf. So we are going to create some color. Now, if you remember from the first card that we did, I had that orange. So we're going to come in with that same orange. This time, though, we'll just white. And that is like dark, dark, dark orange. Oh my God, that's like super bright. We're also going to come in with a little bit of yellow on top of that, just for some other contrast of color. But it's still like, oh my gosh, in your face. So how do we make this a little bit softer and not so, uh? Um, I'm going to take my orange blending brush just to blend it in. Okay, if I have a little bit of some splotchiness, but just to kind of blend the colors, that's the first step. And then the next step is, going back to what we did with the paint, paint splatters, grab, I have the chocolate stencil butter, but you could also grab brown paint, you could grab whatever you want. You could even do this with this if you wanted to. Um, I just like the paint. Going back to that tiny little brush, I'm just going to grab a tiny, tiny bit on here. And I have paper towel. I'm going to take a lot of the paint off just so I have, and I can kind of see, I want it to be like that. And I'm just going to rub. It does not need to be perfect. And just add texture to it. So I didn't have to go out and find the perfect color I'm making. It. And I kind of like that. So now I'm going to test my dye, which I stuck somewhere. Where did I stick it? <laughs> I lose things on my desk, I swear. I'm gonna take my dye and I'm gonna place it on here. And do I get exactly, yep, I'm good. So that's an easy way that you can see there was a base to this. <laughs> I can't find it. Oh, it's buried in their paper towel, that's why. So as long as I'm liking the way that looks right there, I'm good to go. Now we're gonna die cut that. Man, you guys are so quiet today. Hardly anybody chatting. So we're gonna grab my little baby. Ooh, that was a again. There we go. Okay. Grab my little baby die cutter. And let's go ahead. And so I just did the tiniest little bit of paper because I knew I just needed to die cut the one. And, then, and because it was such light, ink dries immediately. We don't have to wait for that. And then with the stencil butter, I did it white. And look at that. Isn't that pretty? It already has that like look of fall. It looks like a leaf that's been on the ground for a while. That will trample. Something about autumn just screams, it's okay to look really rustic and kind of grungy. But like we only have a couple of months here. I feel like everybody's wanting to learn about autumn cards. Other than that, they're kind of like, ah, I'm like, okay, let's do cards before everybody gets kind of bummed out of them. <laughs> All right. Add a little bit of some adhesive to the back of this and then ink. Now, this one I add a little bow. This one will leave plain, but you can easily do the little bow with some twine if you wanted to. Take your pick. If you like the bow, do the bow. If you don't like the bow, don't do the bow. Have fun with it. You could also do a secondary. Pretend these were different colors. You could do a secondary one and have a double. Ooh, maybe we can do that real fast. Let's just try it, see what it looks like. Because I already have my gel plate there, let's stick this little guy too here. And let's do a lighter color. Let's go more yellow. And then we'll add that brown on top. I'll have my paintbrush. So you could also die cut them and then do the trick. So see how I've done that. And because it's on the, the gel plate, um, it's not wiggling around on me. So let's see what this one looks like with two. Ah, see, change it up a little bit. Sometimes you just have a little something. I like this one. You look good. I was about to grab this and add a piece of <laughs> hey, wrong thing. Wrong thing. So there's nothing wrong with playing around and going, if you have, I like keeping spare parts on my desk when I'm working and they're all kind of similar colors because something might inspire you to go, ooh, I'll try that. But if it's not on your desk, you might not look to see and do that. So there is that. Now, again, remember we added that color onto the embossing folder. This one we're going to keep white. The other option, I'm going to do this to the backside. 
is you could take it. I'm just doing it to the back and you could add it with the paintbrush again, just kind of hitting those top layers. So I'll show you what this looks like kind of all put together. And then you guys tell me which one do we want to have showing the brown. This is just to give ideas, kind of go your own way. Now I'm just hitting the tops of the embossing folder. And so you can really see that weaving. Or do you like it more stark? Let's take a look to see how it all looks together. I love the craft paper in there. Maybe you want it more white. Maybe you don't want to have the craft paper as a layer. Or maybe you want to do a layer of one of these colors in the background instead of craft. You have all kinds of fun. So here's with the, the brown. Oh, that's just part of it. And then that goes there. There's that version. So it's got a little bit of a hint of color. Or flip it and keep it really, really clean just showing the embossing and then putting that on there see how just one little change changes the whole look of the card which one do you guys like better do you want to keep it white clean simple or do we want to see a hint of that brown on there i will glue whichever side you guys tell me that you want i'll leave it for a quick second so before i glue it down i'll just put that off side. and there's a bit of a delay so i'll let you figure it out this one again remember i did the dune the color so it's got a little bit of a sheen on there so there's those ones that that went so fast that's fun and see we just played around and had some fun with the colors that was our third card our second card was the one again same embossing folder this time we had our little cluster of flowers and then our first one we did the negative resist we blended add a little color splash did some little flicks of paint from back when we were little love it and then the gems no gems Play around where you want to have your stamp at the bottom or the top. It doesn't look great. It doesn't matter. There it is. All right. Nobody say anything. I'm going to go to the white side. For some reason, I'm just digging like the plain white. Too late now. <laughs> We're going to stick with the white. <laughs> All right. Just put it like clean. But you can go as mucky and as, you know, in your face as you want to. You could also, because this is the same texture, if you had that embossing folder, you could texture of either one on there just keeping it nice and clean and fun but just keeping with simple colors the types of colors are your leaves everything else is white and craft or brown so really keeping it simple and clean and just easy what do they call it uh clean and simple cards cas cards you know keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> but sometimes i and i will say the cleaner and more simple the cards are harder sometimes they are to do because you make that little smudge mistake or you misalign something and the whole card gets wonky because there's not much on them. So simple cards are to make them look elegant are some of the hardest cards to do sometimes, not always. These ones I feel are pretty, pretty straightforward and they're they're not hard to, to put together just having all those elements. So just refresh again. We have our resist cards with our fun and blending in the background, just really keeping it simple. You could do embossing on the front white if you wanted to. Here we are. Yeah, the kiss card. <laughs> keep it simple. Keep it. And then I didn't come up with that. That's, that's something around the orange. We have embossed folder. You could also keep these white with a little cluster with and then just a simple little stamp. And then here we have a little four. Adding your little four square. Again, you could turn this one, any of these, into Christmas by having Christmas sheets instead of leaves. You could do these birthdays, these little cute cupcakes. You know, this could go, you could make this 4th of July with stars and have red, white, and blue in there. So many of these you could definitely change into whatever season you want to. It's kind of very generic cards, but the techniques are just really easy, really simple, a little bit of ink blending, and I bet you have almost everything you need. And if it's not ink, I bet you have a paint that would work, or you would have some paper that you could put in the background on there. Probably have colored, you know. If you've got stuff for card making, you probably have most of the stuff I just showed you. And if you don't have that specific um, leaf die or punch, then use it the leaf. Have fun with it. I really wanted a different shape, but I tend to have a lot of the same ones. And that's okay. I have the traditional maple leaf one. I was wanting to have like a cool, I don't know, elm leaf. I didn't get hot, so I used what I had. You use what you got. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everybody for coming in and watching and sticking with us and thank you the elements really pop on the white the elements the colored elements really truly do pop so really quickly there is also another event going on it's totally free if you're really into card making paper crafting scrapbooking let me show you real fast what my uh, version is 
link is down below in the information section on my, my uh, YouTube and Facebook. Um, Instagram, I believe it is in my uh, info section. If you click on my bio, it'll take you over. It is called Scrapbooking Fun Summit. Um, and this is what I made. There's two versions. So it's a way, again, to use supplies you probably already have. The freebie is the printables that are on here. Um, so you, therefore you can print out all these really fun printables. So this printable, that printable, this one, um, that's the same one. There's one more. There's one more. I just don't have it in Oh, yeah. So one, two, three. There's a fourth one. And then there's papers. You also have the background papers that are on here, too. So basically what these are, these are using envelopes to make a little mini book or a little open flat book. And so look at that. It's a little accordion mini book. So much fun. They're so cute. This is one. It's also got little pockets in here. It's more of a card. So you could put a gift card in here or you could put like little fun elements that you want to send if you're giving somebody a card. Um, it's just easy. This one is built to be more like a little mini book. And so I put pictures of when we went skiing last with my family. And then there's extra pictures that we tucked into the edges here. So this is the last time we went skiing. And this one, I fold this piece over and then this flap. So it kind of keeps it nice and contained. And again, this is using craft envelopes. So you probably already have some of the stuff in your flaps as well. So here's one of the other papers that we have here. And you can get all of these fun tools for free with joining the summit and see how it fits. This is super cute. And it's got pockets in all three of these sections. And I'll show you how to assemble it. The link is free. It's down in the information section to join the Scrapbooking Fun Summit. So, and this is my class, but there is a ton of classes that are available and they're all linked. So if you go there, it shows all the different classes that are available and who the teachers are. And it's just kind of a fun event and it starts today. So if you're looking for it, really free or you can upgrade if you don't have time to watch all the classes now, you can upgrade and watch them later on. All right, so have an amazing day, everybody. We'll be back next week. And guess what? I'm gonna show you a little, little sneaky peek. It's still in the box. Ooh, that was loud. We have Catherine Cooler in the house that we're gonna be playing with next week. Can't wait to show you what's in the box and all the fun cards we're gonna make with that. So have an amazing day. Welcome to November. I can't believe we're November already. That is just insane. Totally nuts. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye.